right, everybody. Amen. Let's all just keep trusting our Lord. Let's stand up together and sing the uh, beginning hymnal. Trust in my Lord as I walk along. I just keep trusting my Lord as He gives a song. Though the storm clouds darken the sky or the heavenly train, I just keep trusting my Lord. He will never. Your faithful friend, I can count on him to the very end. Though the storm clouds darken the sky or the heavenly train, I just keep trusting my Lord. He will never. Savior's Love, page 256 in your hymnal. I stand up. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene. Glad to have you back tonight. We had uh, great services this morning, great Sunday school hour, great uh, church service. Place was filled up, and we had visitors here with us. And we're glad to have you here with us tonight at Liberty Baptist. Of course, our young people 
are out. Uh, we have all of our children out in the gym and the teens in the teen room, so they're not in here with us. Some times people look around, they don't see the children and wonder, do we have any children? Some churches they don't, but we have a bunch. They're out in the other buildings. We have uh, the uh, Wednesday night, we have our Bible study, the book of Revelation, and I hope that you'll come for that. The importance of the new heaven and the new earth, that's what we'll be uh, speaking on there in Revelation chapter 20. We're working our way through the end of the book. And uh, also on Thursday night, we have our trustee work night at 5 o'clock. We have a number of projects we're working on here at the church. And then uh, we, have, we do have our uh, evangelism explosion and uh, visitation on Saturday morning. Uh, I know it's the day before Easter, but I talked with the folks and they wanted to do that, so you're invited to come with us and go. Uh, Easter Sunday, we have just one service next uh, Sunday, and that'll be at 10 o'clock. And uh, our Easter offering will go towards the parking lot. Looks like we had more monies given towards the parking lot today. We're closing in on that number. And uh, next uh, Sunday, we will have uh, an egg hunt for the children, and uh, that'll be during the uh, service here. And so uh, we want, want you to bring the children. By the way, there are invitations out there on the welcome desk. There's, they're not going to do us any good to sit out there. You might as well take them, and when you go to the grocery store or wherever you go, take some of those and hand them out. They're not going to do us any good sitting there on the welcome desk. And so take a handful of them. People, a lot of people are, they don't know where in the world to go to church, you know. I mean, they might as well come here, amen. <laughs> Just take some of them, hand them out, and invite some folks to come uh, to uh, church next week. <clears throat> there is <clears throat> a senior's breakfast on the 5th, and they'll be going to Egg Town. That's a new place. I don't know where the Egg Town is. Oh, okay. I, su I suppose they have eggs there, right, since it's Egg Town? I, sa I says uh, they probably have eggs there since it's Egg Town, right? I wonder if they have pancakes. They probably do, okay. They do, okay, good. Uh, on that same day, we have the Teen Camp Car Wash. That's between 9 and 1 p.m. That's right here in the church parking lot. So you can bring your car, get it get it cleaned, get the pollen all off your car, bring your truck, bring your boat, bring your trailer. <laughs> there is a ladies' conference if you're interested in going, uh, and that's on the 13th, and so uh, you're invited to be part of that if you want to be part of that. I do have a missionary letter from the Elliots. These are missionaries to Canada. And uh, they're doing a, a, a good job there. Continue to pray for them. They just baptized six at their church there. And uh, their son was accepted to Faithway Baptist College, which is there in Canada. So they're glad about that. So he can go to school up there, doesn't have to come down uh, to the U.S. So. Continue to pray for those folks. Did you like the video this morning from Hope Children's Home? Yeah. Good. It was a great, great video about the Hope Children's Home. I do have um, an update on prayer request. Uh, Sam Poole is at home and uh, continue to pray for him. He doesn't mind, and on this uh, note that I have, he doesn't mind visits if you want to visit or send a card or give him a call. He's looking forward to be, being back in church. I have another one here. Steve Marsh, Marsha has an infection in his leg. He's in rehab. Pray for him. Those are the only new, new ones that I have. And we praise the Lord for the 43 that were saved at the fair this week. 
Sarasota County Fair. Praise the Lord for that. Uh, Brother Bob, I'm going to have you come up and lead us in a word of prayer, if you don't mind. I, uh, I'm reading in my devotions right now. I just read through the Bible, and then I, after I read through the Bible, I read through it again. And I'm, I'm in Deuteronomy now, and I was reading, it was yesterday morning, I was reading in chapter 8, in verse 18, the Bible says, But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth. Isn't that good? The Lord is the one that gives us the power to even have any wealth at all. We need to thank him for that, amen? If it wasn't for the Lord, we wouldn't be able to have wealth. But God is the one that does that. It's a tremendous verse of scripture. I praise the Lord for that. Brother Bob, why don't you come and lead us in a word of prayer before the ushers come to receive you all. Thank you, Pastor. <clears throat> Father, we pray and I pray that you bless our lives, bless our finances, Lord, as we give some what you've given to us. We graciously and with kind hearts give it back to you. I pray now, Lord, for this service and I pray for our congregation that's here during these last days. Father, enlighten us with your Holy Spirit and with your word and through the pa preaching of our pastor. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. to tell the story in your hymnal, page 190, verses one, to one and four. Thank you. 
thing, uh, I guess it's handshaking time first, right? I'm sorry. Please, uh, please handshake with one another and let's uh, shake hands. For God so loved the world. I'll let you go ahead and sit down for this one. For God so loved the world, He gave His only Son to die on Calvary's tree. From sin to set me free, someday He's coming back. What glory! Do 
got a, I got a Rocky Dome. I got, I got a bowing microphone. It has to be flipped around the other way because it's, there you go. It's on. Okay. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Appreciate it. You want me to play the guitar for sure. you? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> If he's lost, then pity the pity the
Take our Bibles, turn to Colossians chapter 1, if you would, Colossians chapter 1. And we'll look at verse 18 there in Colossians chapter 1, verse 18 and verse 19. If you can stand with me, then go ahead and stand as we read these two verses, verses 18 and 19 of Colossians chapter 1. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. Christ is the head of of the church. That's the theme of these verses. Christ is the head of the church. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for your word. Pray, Father, that you would speak to our hearts tonight. We thank you for these that are gathered here in the house of God. We thank you for the children and the teens. Father, uh, they're being ministered to in, uh, on the property. And Father, we pray that you would uh, just speak to our hearts tonight. Help us to give you your proper place, to give Christ his proper uh, place, his rightful place here in the church. Now we pray these things in Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Pastor stood before his church on Sunday morning at the end of the service and he said, folks, he said, I've got some very important news to give to you. He said, the same God that called me here to pastor this church has called me to pastor another church. And so the congregation, they were very quiet and uh, they were just shocked by the news that the pastor had just given to them. And uh, after that news, the music director got up and he said, shall we all stand and sing, what a friend we have in Jesus. <laughs> Now, I don't know if he, he knew. I'm sure he didn't know that the pastor was uh, leaving, but uh, I thought it was you know, kind of funny that he would get up and sing the song, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. Jesus is the head of the church. Christ is the one that is the founder and the pastor. He was the first pastor of the church. He was the founder of the church. He's the foundation of the church. A lot of people have different ideas about the church. Some think that the Pope is the head of the church. Some think that pastor is the head of the church. Some think that the deacons are the head of the church. Some think that there's a convention or an association that's the head of the church. Some people have an idea that the government is the head of the church, but Christ is the head of the church. In this passage, Paul is writing to the church at uh, Colossae, and of course, the whole book is about how to be success successful in the Christian life, to be successful spiritually. And so in this passage, he actually is talking about how if you want to be, success, be a success spiritually, then you need to give Christ his rightful place in the church. Give Christ his rightful place in the church. Christ is the head of the church. And along with that, we get, make Christ the head over us. Amen? But give him his rightful place. If you want to be successful spiritually, then you need to give Christ his rightful place. And so Paul, in these verses, tells us why Christ is the head of the church. Number one, Christ is the head of the church because he's the beginning of the church. Look at verse 18. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning. Christ is the head of the church because he is the beginning of the church. What does it mean? The word beginning there means the originator. Christ is the originator of the church. He is the originator or the founder of the church. Matthew 16, 18, Jesus said, Upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Christ is the originator, the beginner, the founder of the church. He is the rock upon which the church is built. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, 
Verse 4, the Bible says, And did all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of the spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. Christ is the rock upon which the church is built. What does that mean? That means he's the foundation upon which the church was built. He is the founder, the originator. He is the foundation upon which the church is built. You say, but I thought you started Liberty Baptist Church. I, I did follow the leadership of Christ to start this church. He is actually the founder of the church. I simply followed the example of the Lord Jesus Christ. We should be following his example. First Peter chapter 2 and verse 21. For even here in 2 were you called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that we should follow in his steps. I simply followed in the steps of Christ by starting this church. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 20. And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. He is the chief cornerstone of the church. There was a famous artist by the name of Michelangelo. Michelangelo did a number of paintings. He did sculptures. His most famous sculpture, I believe, is the statue of David. That is the symbol that they use actually here in Sarasota as their uh, symbol of the city here in Sarasota. Uh, the work stands in Florence, Italy today. It's 18 feet high. I mean, it is some statue. It is some statue that he carved. Many people don't know the whole story. Michelangelo, he didn't have the money to go down and actually buy a piece of marvel, marble to, to carve that statue out of. So he went down uh, to a place where they would discard marble and they would discard stone. And he went down there and he found this piece of marble that had been discarded. Nobody else wanted the piece of marble. And he, he took that piece of marble, brought it back uh, to his, uh, his place, and he began to carve on that piece of marvel, marble. And uh, this piece of marble that was rejected by all the other artists, rejected by everyone else, but he brought it back. He began to carve on that thing, chisel on it, I should say, and he chiseled out the statue of David, one of the most famous statutes in all of the world. It became a masterpiece, but it came, it was rejected by all the other artists. It was rejected by everyone else. I thought about that, and I thought about the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the rock upon which the church is built. Jesus Christ is rejected by the people in the world. He's rejected by individuals. He's rejected all around the world. But Jesus Christ is a masterpiece. Amen. He, the church, is built upon the foundation of the Lord Jesus Christ. Christ is the head of the church because he is the beginning of the church. Number one. Number two. Christ is the head of the church because he was the first to rise from the dead. Look at verse 18, the last part of verse 18. The firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have preeminence. Christ was the firstborn from the dead. Because of the resurrection, we'll be celebrating the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ next Sunday. Because of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, the church even exists. Without the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we wouldn't be here tonight. Amen. It's only because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ that we're even here tonight. He died. He was buried. He rose again. And because of that, we can have life everlasting. He conquered death. If he hadn't conquered death, then how could we be sure that we have the gift of eternal life? He conquered death so we could have eternal life so that we uh, could have assurance of our salvation. What is the church? It's a bunch of people. It's a body of believers, people who have trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ, who raised from the dead. Amen. That's what the church is. Uh, we're a, a body of, of believers that have trusted in Jesus Christ that have gathered together. We're not a social club. There are social clubs that meet. We're not a social club. 
Actually, we're a saving center to reach people with the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's what our goal is. That's why we support Amazing Grace. These guys are out there all week long winning people to the Lord. It's because of churches like ours that support them so they can do that job. It costs money for them to even put the booth in there. We support them. They're able to put the booth in there, win people to Christ. Some of our own people were down there uh, giving the gospel out. And so uh, we're a saving center. We're continuing to see people come to know Christ as, our, uh, as their Savior. We're reaching out to the lost and dying world. All of us are to be winners of the lost. I teach Evangelism Explosion. We have a class of folks that are coming on Saturday morning. I'm teaching them how to reach people with the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. We continue to teach people, and our job is to continue to go out and reach people with the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. You say, well... I may be the least of the soul winners. All of us ought to be doing the best we can to reach people with the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. The story is told of a businessman that called a, a company that had a product, and he wanted them to send literature about the product. He said, please don't send me a salesperson. I just want the literature. Just send me the literature. The next week, there was a knock on... Uh, the businessman's door, and uh, it was a salesman from that company, and he said, I'm a salesman from the company that you asked for literature. I brought the literature. He said, well, I told you, just send me the literature. I didn't want a salesperson. All I wanted was the literature. And he said, well, they thought it would be best if I brought the literature. He said, I've only been working uh, for the company, so I'm not much of a salesman. In fact, he said, I'm as close to no salesman as they got down there. <laughs> you know what you might be saying? I'm as close to no soul winner as there is. But you know what? God wants us all to reach people with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. We can do that. We can take the gospel. We can be a witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. It's funny. Uh, uh, the Hortons, I took those, uh, their family out to lunch today, and we had, last week I was there uh, with my uh, brother, and I witnessed to uh, the waitress there, and we got the same waitress today, <laughs> the same waitress, and she said, I'm going to come and see your church, I'm going to visit your church, I still have the track, I gave her, I gave her a track and witnessed to her, and what was interesting her daughter this week uh, told her, asked her about going to church. And she said, I'm going to bring her to church. And she said, we need to go. You're so busy. You need to take time off so you can go uh, to church. And so uh, she said, I'm going to come. Said, that was her, her last words before I left her today. She said that she would see me. And so uh, I'm looking forward uh, to seeing her again. We've witnessed I take folks to that place, missionaries and so forth. I've witnessed to a lot of those waitresses in there. In fact, we had several wave at me, you know, when they went by the table today. And that's good to be a good testimony unto the Lord and give the gospel out. Amen. Everywhere we go, we must give the gospel. Christ is the head of the church. Uh, first of all, because he's the beginning of the church. Secondly, because he's the first to rise from the dead. Thirdly, look at verse 18, because he is preeminent. Christ is the head of the church because he is preeminent. He's preeminent in all things. The Bible says, verse 18, and in all things he might have preeminence. That word preeminence means first place. Christ is to have first place in all things. He's to have first place. If you want to be a success in your spiritual life, you need to give Christ first place in your life. He should certainly have first place in the church uh, and not only does it mean first place, but supreme majesty. He's the supreme majesty of the universe. Christ should be given preeminence. Notice what the Bible says. Here's some verses. In Mark chapter 16, in verse number 19, the Bible says is that Christ has been exalted to the right hand of God the Father. So then, after the Lord had spoken unto them... He was received up in heaven and sat on the right hand of God. Jesus is seated on the right hand of God, a place of authority right now. In Philippians chapter 2 and verse 9, the Bible says that Christ has been given a name above every name. Wherefore, God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. Revelation chapter 5 and verse number 12, the Bible says that Christ has been given... All things, saying with 
a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. The Bible tells us in Acts chapter 2 in verse 36 that Christ was made both Lord and Christ. When we say Lord and Christ, we're talking about the Messiah and the Savior. In Acts 2.36, Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus, whom, he, whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. John chapter 3 and verse 31, the Bible says that Christ is above all. He that cometh from above is above all. He that is of the earth is earthly and speaketh of the earth. He that cometh from heaven is above all. Two times he is above all. Christ is above all things. He's preeminent. We're to give him preeminence. We're to make him first place in our life and in our church. In Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 4, the Bible says that Christ is more excellent, uh, has a more excellent name than even the angels being made up so much better than the angels, as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. I'm working on a series in the book of Hebrews. One of these days I'll preach through the book of Hebrews. I'm uh, working on that. And that there's a particular, that passage talks about, in Hebrews it talks about, and they're explaining that Christ is greater than the angels. <laughs> and that's what that passage talks about. In Hebrews chapter 3 and verse number 3, it says that Christ has more glory than even the greatest of men. For this man was counted worthy of more glory than Moses, insomuch that he who hath builded the house hath more honor than the house. In Revelation chapter 1 and verse number 11, it says that Christ is the Alpha and Omega. That's the first and the last letters of the Greek alphabet. He's the first and the last, saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And what thou seest, write in the book and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, unto Smyrna, unto Pergamos, unto Thyatira, unto Sardis, unto Philadelphia, and Laodicea. In Ephesians chapter 1, in verse number 22, the Bible says that Christ has all things under his feet, and hath put all things under his feet, and gave him to be head over all things to the church. Christ is preeminent, amen? Christ is preeminent. First Peter chapter 3 and verse 22 says that, that all things are subject unto Christ. All things. Who is gone into heaven and is on the right hand of God. Angels and authorities and powers being made subject Unto him. Christ is not only head of the church, Christ is head over the universe. Amen. <laughs> He's over everything. We need to give him a preeminence. He deserves preeminence. He deserves first place in all things. If we want to be a success in our spiritual lives, we need to let Christ have preeminence in our lives. The pastor told about how this blind man in his church is a man who's blind, 90 years old, been blind since he was born. He told how this blind man came up to him one day and he said, Pastor, could I touch your face? And that's the way blind people, they, they touch the face so they can uh, see who you are. They can touch your features. And he touched his face and he said, Pastor, he said, you know that one day, in heaven, the first face that I will see will be the face of Jesus. <laughs> and he said, you know what, Pastor? And the pastor said, what? He said, it'll be worth it to be blind for 90 years and for the first face I see to be the face of Jesus. <laughs> oh, he gave Christ preeminence, amen, first place. When you give Christ first place, Christ is the head of the church. Christ is the head of the church because he's the beginning of the church. Christ is the head of the church because he's the first to be raised from the dead. Christ is the head of the church because uh, he's preeminent. And then Christ is the head of the church because he is the fullness of God himself. 
Look what it says there in verse 19. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. He is the fullness of God himself. Look at that word dwell there. The word dwell is an important word there in that passage. It means to be at home permanently. What it means is Jesus Christ is in the fullness of God permanently. He is God. He is deity. He is God. Christ uh, is before all things. The Bible tells us he was he is the fullness of God. When we praise Jesus Christ, we're praising God. Amen. When we sing praises unto Jesus, we're praising God. Jesus Christ is God. What does it say in John 1, 1? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Amen. Jesus Christ is God. He is God. He's the head of the church. We need to give him his rightful place in the church, his rightful place in our, in our lives. I'm afraid that many have not. They're kind of like the sign, the church sign. The church sign had put up on their church sign, Jesus only. It was an old-fashioned sign. It was one of those signs that you put the letters up there. The sign that we have out there is an electronic sign, but the old-fashioned kind where you put the letters on there. But they had put the letters on there, Jesus only. There had been a storm, and the first three letters fell off, and so it said, us only. Us only. And I'm afraid that's the way it is in many churches. It's us only. But we need to give Christ his proper place. He is the head of the church. You've probably heard of Tuscanini, the great... Uh, Conductor. Tuscanini one time conducted Beethoven's Ninth Symphony. I like to listen myself. I like to listen to symphonies. I like to, that's the kind of music I like to listen to. I listen to it in my car. I'll even listen to it back in my office. No singing, just the orchestra playing, the symphonies playing. I, I like to listen to that. It calms me, it uh, helps me to think better. But Tuscanini led the Beethoven's Ninth Symphony, and it's a tremendous story. After he finished leading the symphony, he bowed, and the people all gave him a standing ovation. And they cheered. They didn't just applaud, but they cheered. And when he went to walk off the stage, they stood up again and cheered again. <laughs> and he came back and he bowed again. And then he went and he was going to walk off the platform again. Again, they stood and cheered him on. <laughs> Every time he went to walk off the platform, they would cheer again. And he would point to the orchestra and the, the people would cheer even louder. And uh, again, every time he tried to get off the platform, they would cheer. And so finally he calmed them all down raised his hands up and calmed them all down. And he said this. He said, I am nothing. He pointed to the orchestra and said, they are nothing. But Beethoven is everything. He's everything. He's everything. And when I thought about that, I thought about Christ. I am nothing. You are nothing. But Christ is everything, everything, everything. Christ is everything. He's the head of the church. We need to give him his rightful place in the church, in our lives. We need to give him his rightful place. Let's bow our heads, every head bowed, every eye closed tonight. Christ is everything. He's everything. He's everything. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed tonight. Would you say that Christ is everything in your life? Will you give Christ and make Christ everything in your life? You say, by the grace of God, I want to give him his proper place in my life. I want to give him his proper place in this church, his rightful place in my life, his rightful place in the church. I want to 
give him his rightful place by the grace of God. I want to do that. Would you pray for me that I'd be able to do that tonight, preacher? Slip your hands up all through the building. Would you pray that I would be able to do that? I'm not going to say it's going to be easy, but we'll pray for you to do that. Amen? Amen. Thank you very much for your hands. And, and I, I want to ask you this question. Maybe you know someone tonight. They call themselves a Christian, but their life is not all that it should be. They're not giving Christ his proper place in their life. And you'd say, you know what? I know some Christian, but they're not given Christ's preeminence in their life. Their life is not all that it should be for the Lord Jesus Christ, and I'm going to pray for them tonight. Would you pray with me, preacher? I'm going to pray for someone tonight. Would you pray with me? Slip your hands up all through the building. I know someone. They're not giving Christ his proper place. They're Christian. Thank you very much. Amen. And I'll pray with you. Let's bring them to the Lord in prayer uh, tonight. Again, the only way that you can give Christ preeminence in your life, give him his rightful place in your life, is if you've trusted in him as your Savior. If you've never trusted in Christ as your Savior, then you can't give him preeminence. You can't give him his rightful place until you, by faith, have called upon the Lord Jesus Christ to save you. It's a simple thing to call upon Christ, put your faith in him. You simply pray a simple prayer, believe it in your heart, pray it to God in heaven, and he says he'll save you. You put your faith in Christ. When we put our faith in Christ, then he counts that as righteousness and he saves us. You can do that by praying a simple prayer like this. Dear Lord, I know I'm a sinner and that I can't save myself. I know that you died, were buried, and rose again to save me from my sin. I'm trusting you this moment to save me and give me the gift of eternal life. Thank you for saving me. Tonight our heads are still bowed, our eyes are still closed. Maybe there's someone even here tonight and you prayed that simple prayer and asked Christ to save you. You believe that he saved you tonight. Anyone like that here in this place tonight? Maybe you're online tonight watching our message and you prayed this prayer, you asked Christ to save you. If you would contact us here at the church, we'll be glad to give you some help be glad to give you some information, some literature to help you in your walk with Christ. I'm going to have a word of prayer. We'll have the invitation. We'll invite you to come. Dear Lord, I pray that you would be with this time of invitation tonight. I pray, dear Lord, that uh, you would uh, you've, uh, be with these folks tonight. First of all, the folks tonight that said, by the grace of God, I, I want to give Christ his rightful place in my life. I want to give him preeminence, first place. And dear Lord... It's not always easy to do that because we have so many wants, we have so many cares, we have so many things that we have to do that uh, many times we put Christ second, but I pray that you'll help us to give Christ preeminence in our life and in our church. Give him his rightful place as the head of this church, as the found, uh, foundation of this church. Help us to give him preeminence in our life. And then, Lord, I pray along with the folks tonight that are praying for someone that they know, that, Father, they profess to be a Christian, but their life is not what it should be. I pray for them tonight, dear Lord, that you would draw them closer to you. Father, draw them uh, to the place where they'll give you preeminence in first place and the rightful place in their life. Now, Father, save the lost. Be with this time of invitation, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's all stand to our feet. We'll sing a verse or two of an invitation. Great opportunity to come and pray here at the altar. Why don't you come tonight? As we begin to sing, why don't you come? We'll sing one more verse. You can still come. The altar's open for you tonight. Why don't you come? <laughs> 